Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we will discuss on how to write an experiment report. So for this video, we will discuss on experiment 3B energy. The objective of this experiment is to verify the law of conservation of energy. Before we start to do discussion, okay, let us refer back what are the theory behind it. Okay, so this is the steel ball and this steel ball is attached with the free fall adapter. And here is a ruler. Okay, at the bottom here, there is a photo gate. Okay, photo gate A and also photo gate B. So this photo gate actually is a, a velocity detector. Okay, why we say it's a velocity detector? Because here there is a distance between the photo gate A and photo gate B. They give you the displacement where the displacement is equal to 3 cm. Okay, so when the fall is the ball is falling down the ball is falling downward okay so it will change from potential energy initially is potential energy okay so when the ball is falling down passing through photo gate a the timer here okay the timer here will start okay will start to count the time passing through from a and then when the ball passing through photo gate b this timer will stop Okay, so meaning that when it's passing through A, the timer will start to run and then when the ball is passing through B, the timer will automatically stop. Okay, so we will take the time between photo gate A and photo gate B, eh, missing, meaning that the time that passing through the distance of 3 cm. Okay, so why we call velocity detector? Because the velocity is equal to the displacement over the time taken okay so where displacement is 3 cm and the time taken later we can read from the timer here okay so initially is mgh before it release is mgh is a potential energy so when it drop to the bottom and passing through the velocity detector the passing through the photo gate it will convert it into kinetic energy uh, if let's say this is the reference point okay reference point meaning that from mgh h of course we will take from the bottom of the bar until passing through the photo gate here so it will convert potential energy become kinetic energy uh, become half mv squared okay so if let's say this is point a this is the energy at point a this is the energy at point b Okay, so we say conservation of energy meaning that the, the total energy at point A before it drop is equal to the total energy at point B where the total energy at point A is equal to mgh and the total energy at point B when it passing through the photo gate here is equal to half mv squared okay so m and and we can cancel each other meaning that the ball okay the ball does not uh, depends on the mass huh? the mass is big or small okay it doesn't give any effect to the velocity okay because later we will cancel off the mass after that we will get v square equals to 2 g h okay so this is the equations that we will use to plotting the graph Okay, so this is the equation V square equals to 2 G H. Okay, and for this experiment, we will we are going to plot V square versus H. Uh, v square versus H. Meaning that we need to find V square and also we need to find H. Okay, so H is the value, the height, uh, the height here, the height from the bottom of the ball until the photo gate. Okay, so this is the height. So this is the uh, variable. Okay, so this is the variable that you need to uh, you need to change uh, from twenty cm to uh, fifty five cm. Okay, next we will go to time taken so for twenty cm, twenty cm high. The time taken. Okay, so we will take the reading the 
data already give you one two three yeah? so we repeat for three times yeah? we repeat for three times where later you need to take the average okay so we take t1 plus t2 plus t3 and then we divide it by three you will get your t average okay so here if you refer to the decimal places or the smallest divisions or the uncertainty you find out that the t is equal to plus minus okay here should be plus minus uh, plus minus 0 0.000001 meaning that six decimal places so our t average also you need to write as 0 0.12345678 six decimal places uh, we must follow back the uncertainty of the time okay so next how can we find the velocity as i mentioned just now because we want to plot graph v square versus or against against h okay so h we already have and we need to find v square okay so before we find v square we must find what is the velocity for it so how can we find the velocity v equals to ds over dt okay so how can we find here our v is equal to ds over dt okay where s is always uh, if you refer back to your photo gate okay the arrangement of the photo gate uh a and also b is always 3 cm okay so is 3 cm here also already give you the displacement or the distance between photo gate a and b is 0 0.03 Okay, 0 0.03 actually is 0 0.03 meter. Okay, so I substitute in 0 0.03 meter. Okay, and the time taken. Okay, you substitute inside here. Okay, the time taken is the time average, uh, the average value in second. So later, your answer is in meter per second. Okay, meter per second. Okay, and you need to add another column, V squared. Okay, v square is equal to meter square per second square. Okay, so you need to add another column to find v square because you want to plot graph h against v square. Okay, so you need to add another column to find v square. Okay, so after finish completing this table, okay, after completing this table, uh, you need to go to plot graph and then you must do the calculation part. Okay, bear in mind that the delta m already give to you where delta m is equal to 0 0.46 times 10 to the power of 3 cm per second square square against against h okay meaning that this is v square and unit is in meter square per second square okay h still in cm okay still in cm so you need to find centroid first. Huh? So centroid is you must find the mean or the average for H and also the average or the mean for V squared. Then you, you draw here. This is your centroid. Okay, after that, we try to plot the graph. Okay, here we have a few points. Okay, so you can draw the graph. Huh? Okay. So the important thing is you must pass through the centroid and also pass through as many points as possible. Okay, so here this is the line, the best fit line, and then you draw a triangle to find the gradient. Okay, and remember to label x exit and also with the unit. Okay, x and y exit label with the correct unit and also the scales here. Okay, you must uh, use uh, the half of the smallest divisions to find later to find out the gradient okay okay so for example let's say the scales here for example let's say the scale here is equal to 10 20 30 and so on okay so meaning that 10 divided by 10 and half of the smallest scale so we straight away divide 20 0.5 Okay, so meaning that later when you substitute the gradient, you must substitute with one decimal place. Okay, and if let's say v square, for example, let's say you get 0 0.5, for example, so 0 0.5, 0 0.5 over 20, for example, 
So 0 0.5 over 20, you will get 0 0.025. So 1, 2, 3. So when you substitute to find the gradient, you must substitute 3 decimal places. Okay, so it depends on what is the scales that you are using. Uh. This is what I assume only. So this is not the correct scales. Uh. Okay, so later you need to find out your own scale. Okay, so after that, when you substitute to find the gradient, okay, so you must substitute, for example, because our uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where y1 y exit you must have three decimal places eh? so meaning that one two three decimal place minus one two three decimal place okay over x exit is our h so x exit must have one decimal place eh? so for example okay we take uh okay point one decimal place minus one decimal place okay so after that, you need to find out. Okay, our y exit is in meter square per second square, and then uh, x exit still in cm. Okay, so still in cm. Actually, you can straight away you convert it into meter. Okay, so meaning that if you want to convert into meter, you must times ten to the power of negative two, so it will become meter. Okay, so you just bracket. Cm, you can straight away convert it become power of negative 2 meter. Okay, so the answer that we will get meter and meter, we can cancel. We will get meter per second square straight away. Okay, so remember for this part, initially it's in cm. Initially it's in cm. But because you want to cancel off the unit, so it's easier we convert straight away cm into meter. We convert cm into times 10 to the power of negative 2 and then we will get meter so later meter and meter we can cancel out and then you will straight away get the value meter per second square okay so the uncertainty here is given eh? so this one you need to find uh, from the data that we get just now 0 point here 0 0.46 times 10 to the power of 3 cm per second square eh? Okay, so remember 0 0.46. Uh, so we write here 0 0.46 times 10 to the power of 3 cm per second square. Okay, and uh, it's actually easier if you write it in meter per second square. Okay, so we can change it um, power of 3. So we will get 460 cm per second square. So we convert cm into meter meaning that we will get 4.6 meter per second square. Okay, so this is our uncertainty. Step 4 is you need to compare with the equation. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, the first slide is, we know that initially it's mgh, okay, before it drop, we only have mgh, but when it drop until the bottom, okay, the reference point here, it will change convert into half and v squared okay so finally v squared equals to 2 gh okay so v squared will equals to 2 gh we compare y equals to mx plus c y is v squared h is x exit okay so meaning that 2 g is equal to m the gradient is equal to 2g okay gradient is equals to 2g and we want to find g okay so g will equal to m over 2 okay so you divide and then you will get the answer with correct unit okay with the correct unit meter per second square okay remember to write meter per second square okay after that you need to find the uncertainty yeah? from here our equation is g equals to m over 2 Okay, so 2 is, um, we don't have the uncertainty. Okay, so meaning that we only have delta G over G equals to delta M over M. Okay, so G, we move to the other side. So finally, delta G equals to delta M. Okay, delta M from where we will get from uh, step number 3. Okay, to find delta M. M is step number number 2. 
and then G is step number four. Okay, so you substitute all the value, you will get also the unit in meter per second square. Okay, step six is to find the percentage of uncertainty. Okay, so we will take delta G over G times 100%. Okay, so remember to write percentage. Huh? So the answer in percent. Okay, remember to write this symbol. And step seven is to find the percentage of the difference between the theoretical value and experimental value. Huh? Remember to find, to compare theoretical value and experimental value. So we take theory minus experiment with modulus because we only want the the, uh, the difference only okay over theory times 100% so the output also in percent and finally step 8 is to find okay to, to write again uh, write again the result so the actual result plus minus plus minus the uncertainty okay okay so after finish the observation part we will go to the discussion Okay, so as usual, discussion, we have three parts. The first one is reporting the result. Okay, so you must report out what is the uh, theoretical value. Okay, so you must report what is your theoretical value from the experiment. Okay, the second one is the experimental value. Okay, the experimental value. And then you must report also the percentage of uncertainty and last one you must also report percentage of difference uh, between the uh, theoretical value and also experimental value okay next one is the errors and mistakes so you must at least uh, two errors or mistake okay so you must at least two okay you must report at least two uh, okay you can write three as well Okay, then only you go to precaution step or ways to overcome. Okay, ways to overcome. Okay, so meaning that you must overcome the mistakes uh, based on the second part. Okay, so you also need to have at least two uh, ways to overcome or precaution step. And then conclusion is state the experiment finding and make the conclusion based on the learning outcome. Okay, so that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you. Bye.